sigh. Isn't this ballet dancer just beautiful? When we're dancing, I'm pretty sure we all like to think we have the posture and pose of a ballet dancer, but in reality, we're not all so blessed. I bet you're thinking ballet dancers must have some pretty strong back muscles to support that beautiful arched spine, and to be honest, you'd be pretty right. But the muscles you can see in this image are only part of the picture. What we're interested in today is what's beneath this top layer of muscle as we uncover the deep muscles of the back. As you might have guessed, there's more to the muscles of the back than meets the eye. The layer of muscle that we can see on the backs of our friends and family around us is the layer known as the superficial or extrinsic back muscles. These include all the muscles you see popping during back day at the gym. But beneath that layer is a group of deep layer muscles known as the deep or intrinsic muscles of the back. Like many things in anatomy, deep muscles of the back can sometimes be split into a series of groups in an effort to help us learn and memorise them. However, being the big, diverse and wonderful world of humans that we are, different schools of anatomy approach this division differently. One way of approaching the division of the intrinsic back muscles is through dividing the muscles into two longitudinal tracts, a medial tract, which involves the muscles that are closest to the vertebrae, and a lateral tract, which involves the muscles that are a little more lateral. The other way of approaching the division of deep back muscles is by dividing them into layers. This division gives us four layers, a superficial layer, an intermediate layer, a deep layer, and finally, the deepest layer. The division of the intrinsic back muscles into tracts is usually found in some European textbooks, while the division of the intrinsic back muscles into layers is usually found in English language textbooks. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the division into layers as it's more commonly used in popular textbooks, but don't worry, if you're feeling like learning the intrinsic back muscles via tracks, the attachments, innovation and functions remain the same, you can just regroup them in your notes as we work through the muscles. So as we have a lot to cover, let's begin with the superficial layer. So we mentioned earlier that the superficial layer of the intrinsic back muscles is made up of the spinotransverse group of muscles, which itself is made up of two muscles, the splenii muscles, which are the splenius capitis and a splenius cervicis. We're going to begin by looking at the splenius capitis. The splenius capitis muscle has its origin on the spinous processes of the C7 to T3 vertebrae, as well as the nuchal ligament. It inserts on the lateral part of the superior nuchal line, which is found on the occipital bone, and the mastoid process, which is found on the temporal bone. It receives innervation from the lateral branches of the posterior rami of the spinal nerves C1 to C6. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.